my name is Kat and today I want to talk about some of the books that I've recently read. I have four books to talk about in this video today, so it should be a fairly quick one. But it might not be. Let's just get started and find out. So first up, I have here Before I Let Go by Marika Nijkamp. And this was the Booksplosion Book of the Month pick for January. We were working with source books on this one. And the live show for this book has already happened. So if you've read this and you want to check out our spoilery discussion, then I will link that video down below. We had a really great discussion for this book. Like this was a great book club pick because there's so much open to talk about. The basic setup of this book is that we are following a teenage girl named Cory who has moved away from this very small Alaskan town and she's left her best friend behind. Cory has been planning this trip back to Alaska to visit her friend and right before this trip is supposed to happen she gets word that her friend has died by suicide. This makes no sense to Cory because her friend Kira wouldn't do this knowing that Cory Corey's trip was just a few days away. Like, Corey was coming back for her. This isn't something that Kira would do. So even though Kira has died, Corey still goes through with her trip to Alaska and she returns to this small town where she's now treated as an outsider as she tries to figure out, like, what actually happened because something mysterious and weird went down and she is determined to find out what that was. I really enjoyed this book, especially while I was reading it because it was so gripping, like the writing is very beautiful and engaging and there was so much mystery and I just, I, I flew through it. However, I could have gone for a little bit more payoff or like closure at the end. Like we do get some answers, but there's a lot left kind of open, which actually kind of lent to our great discussion of this book. Like there was so much to talk about because there was so much that like we didn't have set in stone answers for and we could kind of theorize. My favorite aspect of this book is probably the writing because again, it was so engaging and just like propelled me through the story. Also, I really enjoyed the relationship between Cory and Kira. I loved their friendship and their love for each other. And my heart just broke repeatedly through this book for Kira. Kira has bipolar disorder and I thought that aspect was handled really well even though again it was very heartbreaking because so many people in her town, her friends, her family, they kind of only see her for her disability and she's more than that and it was just Ah, uh, I felt for Kira a whole lot while reading this. So yeah, overall, I enjoyed this book. I thought it was very engaging and mysterious, though it was lacking a little bit in the closure department for me. The next book that I have here is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This was actually the very first book that I read in 2018, and I read it all in one sitting unintentionally. I picked this up at midnight on a whim, just intending to like read the first few chapters. Then the next thing I knew it was six in the morning and I was finished and I had a whole lot of feelings about it. This is a standalone contemporary novel about a teenage boy named Tanner who was openly bisexual when he lived in California, but now that his family has moved to a very religious part of Utah, he is kind of put himself temporarily back into the closet. He's just got to get through the last few months of his senior year before he can move to a college far away from Utah and be himself again. But things get a little bit complicated when Tanner signs up for this program where you're basically writing a book over the course of a semester. And the mentor to this program is a very attractive Mormon boy who Tanner like instantly develops this huge crush on. And when Tanner is struggling to come up with an idea for this book that he's supposed to write, he kind of ends up just writing down his feelings for this other boy and he doesn't intend to ever like turn this in or show anyone but he keeps writing the story of how he's falling for this boy and it's just it was so good. So many things about the premise just immediately grabbed my attention before I even started reading it and it just delivered exactly what I wanted from this book. It was cute and funny and romantic, heartwarming, heart-wrenching. It was just it was everything that I hoped it would be after reading the synopsis. It just, it delivered. So yeah, 
I loved this book. It's probably my favorite read of the year so far, which like I've only read like four books, but still it was great. And I highly recommend it, especially if you're looking for a cute contemporary novel or you want to read a book with a bisexual main character. This, this is this is what you want. This is what you want. The next book that I have here is Unearthed by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. And this was another book that just totally delivered what it promised. Like there's so much action and adventure and romance and it's it really is like Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider, but with a sci-fi alien kind of twist. Basically, this book takes place in a future where Earth is like screwed. The planet is dying because, you know, look at how humans treat it. Fortunately, humans have found another planet that they're probably gonna go ruin TBH. This new planet used to be the home of this race of aliens known as the Undying, and they seem to have just abandoned the planet and died out. So there's no more life on this planet, but there are all these abandoned temples, and they're full of alien technology, but they're also full of traps. These temples appeal to two types of people. First, the scavengers who just want to like loot all the technology. And second, the scholars who want to investigate and study this civilization. We follow two main characters, a guy who is a scholar and a girl who is a scavenger. And even though they're kind of on opposite sides of like, how to explore this new planet, they do end up forming a tentative alliance because, you know, there there's a lot of other dangerous things that happen in that it's safer for them to, you know, be together, even though they don't completely trust each other. Now, I will say that the pacing was a little bit rocky in the beginning because we start off like right in the action and then a few chapters later, things slow down and get a little info dumpy and then we're like back in the action. Also, while I did really enjoy the relationship, I, I did feel like it happened a little bit fast Though that could also be another factor of kind of the pacing and the fact that I've read this book in one sitting. But yeah, other than those little things, this book was great. Again, it just delivered exactly what it promised. It was such a fun adventure. It would make such a fantastic video game. Like I, I was definitely getting some Tomb Raider and kind of Breath of the Wild vibes because of all the climbing and exploring of temples. And I don't wanna give anything away, but I do want to say that this book did surprise me. Like there are some nice plot twists in here and not just like big game changing plot twists. There are lots of little things, uh, like the story keeps going in directions that I didn't expect. Like it, it, it kept me on my toes. If you're looking for a sci-fi adventure with lots of twists and turns and action and romance, then I, I'd recommend giving this a try because it, 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 it will deliver those things to you. And finally, I have here Beneath the Sugar Sky by Sean and McGuire. This is the third installment in the Wayward Children series, which is a series of novellas. They're, they're very short. They're like less than 200 pages a piece. And I can't really talk about the synopsis of this one in particular because it is the third book. And even though it's not like a direct sequel, it, it is connected enough and, and that re don't read this one first. Like I personally would recommend reading in publication order, but you can read the first two books in any order. Just, just don't read this one first. If you do want more of a synopsis breakdown of the first two books in the series, then I have reviewed those on my channel. I'll link those videos down below. Now, for the most part, I do really like this series, but these books always leave me wanting more. And I think I figured it out. I think I personally just don't really like novellas that much. And like objectively, these are great novellas. Like they really are right in that middle ground between short story and novel. And like they aim to be novellas. They're trying to be novellas and they succeed at that. But I personally am just like consistently left a little unsatisfied because I, I want them to be novels and they're not novels, they're novellas. With this installment in particular, I did feel like the plot was stronger than in the previous two books because like we actually have a quest, we have a mission, we had a stronger story arc in this book. 
But I feel like some of the character development suffered a little bit because plot took priority. Again, I do really enjoy the series. Like, I love the writing. I love the ideas. I just want more. Like, I, I always leave these books kind of unsatisfied because they're just not quite what I want them to be, if that makes sense. I do still appreciate them for what they are though, and I would definitely recommend them, especially if you love portal fantasy or books with beautiful writing. Like, yeah, it's, it's a great series. I just, I want more. I want them to be twice as long as they are. All right, there you have it. Those are the books I've recently read, and that is gonna do it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great night, and I will have another video up soon, so I will see you then. Goodbye!